wall installation for dowel tiles, panoramic porcelain surfaces. This training installation video has been conducted per the American National Standards Institute installation method A108.19 for the installation of gauged porcelain tiles and gauged porcelain tile panels. This will be installed by thin bed method, method bonded with improved, bonded with modified, improved, dry, modified set dry set mortar. cement mortar. Before proceeding, you'll want to confirm that your wall substrate is suitable per the installation method, which can be found in section one of A10819. After you've confirmed it's a suitable substrate, then you'll want to confirm flatness. Here you can see in this wall installation, it's already been coated with a membrane, but the surface preparation work has already been completed first. Your allowable variation is 1 8 of an inch and 10 feet, and that can be found in section five of the A108.19 standard. Here we can see that uh, the wall is being marked out for application of the panoramic panel. We can also see that there is a membrane applied to the wall surface already to close off any absorption. Here the contractor is checking for flatness, and here we're cleaning off the wall of any dust that may be present. The cleaning of the dust and the membrane are all in compliance with section 13 of the installation standard. Here we can see a cleaning of the panel using a scrub pad and a cleaner from Aquamix. And here you see the gentleman using towels to dry the panel. Typically, a dry clean is all that's necessary to remove any surface dust before the application of the carrying rack. Here we see the alignment of the rack onto the A-frame for the panel. You can see a speed square is being used to set the foot of the rack so that when the panel is turned vertically and stood up next to the wall, it doesn't hit the ground. Here we see the suction cups being fastened properly, checking the pump cups to make sure the lines are not visible. You'll want to do this every time you move a panel. Here we can see lifting of the panel on the rack onto the saw horses. The ETM saw horses are very wide, so they sit perfectly on the rack. Clean the back of the panel with a damp sponge. This is also in compliant with section 13. To speed the process up, you can use a microfiber to help remove any excess water from the back of the panel. This will assist in drying. To keep things moving along, this would be a good time to mix your mortar. In this case, we're going to be using Megalite, which is an improved modified dry set mortar with very high bond strengths for this wall installation. Always add your water into the bucket first and then attach your dust collection device and then add about half to three quarters of the bag first, holding back on some of the powder. This will speed up the mixing process. Using a drill with at least 350 RPMs and a proper mixing paddle to mix the mortar. After the initial mix of the partial bag, add the balance of the powder into the bucket. Continue mixing until the mortar is well blended, uniform, creamy, and lump free. Generally, this takes about 90 seconds. After the mortar has been mixed, you'll allow it to slake for three to five minutes. After the three to five minutes, remix for about 30 seconds, and then the mortar is ready for application. Proper mortar application is crucial. One of the most overlooked steps is keying in the mortar properly. This is very important because this helps get the mortar into all the surface textures, ensuring complete contact of the mortar not only to the substrate, but to the back of the panel as well. And then it's just a matter of getting the proper amount of mortar on the wall. Then you can comb your straight lines. The goal is so the wall 
finishes its mortar application at the same time the panel does so that we can marry the panel to the wall into a wet mortar state on both surfaces, ensuring the best possible wet mortar transfer. Combing straight lines on your substrate is also required. Remember, we do not want to trap air behind the panel. If we trap air, we cannot get proper mortar coverage. Also recommended is supporting the panel at the edges as you apply the bonding mortar with your free or non-troweling hand. When installing full-size panels, it is recommended that you start in the middle of it, the panel from either side. This ensures a proper angle on the trowel, which results in an even mortar distribution across the entire panel. Pre-placing spacers at the floor before you set the panel is very important. That's also why the speed square is critical to set height elevations. Once the mortar application is complete, immediately take the panel with a proper amount of manpower, typically three to four people for a full-size panel is sufficient, and get it in place and marry the two together as quickly as possible. As you adjoin the panel to the substrate, try to minimize the amount of shifting of the panel as necessary so that you don't disturb mortar distribution. Once the panel is in place, use a rubber padded beading paddle to set the center only of the panel. This will allow us adequate bond to remove the rack. Release the air from the suction cups as needed. Using a high-speed orbital sander with a pad on it to push the mortar in and work the air out to the edges of the panel. Being careful not to put too much pressure on the edges of the panel, which will be taken care of later. Optionally, you can use a vibratory tool like the Ramondi Volponi to evacuate the air and to make mortar contact. Ensure that you apply pressure. In preparation for the next panel, it is critical that you cut the mortar away so that you leave the air space that's under the panel's edge. Key the mortar in as you did the first panel and every panel Comb the mortar line straight to evacuate air for each and every panel piece. Combing beyond the edge of the panel is a required piece so that we have even mortar distribution all the way past the edge of the panel. Use the ETM slide for the cut panel. As you did the first panel, comb the mortar in straight lines and of course, don't forget to key in your mortar. Preparing the edge to receive the panel Placing the lippage control devices which are required before you install the next panel. You'll want to place them about 10 to 12 inches apart. Bringing in the cut piece of panel, the foot has been set for height elevation, mortars in place, and marrying the two as quickly as possible to ensure wet mortar transfer between the panel and the substrate. Once the cut piece is set in place, Use the rubber padded beading paddle to set it, remove the suction cups, and remove the slide rack. To adjust a panel, you can use a handheld suction cup. Use the orbital sander before you put the lippage straps, caps, or wedges in place. Check for lippage as necessary. Allowable lippage for gauge porcelain tile panels is only 1 32nd of an inch. So pay close attention here and make sure you adjust your panels as needed before putting in your wedges, straps, or caps. Use the palm sander to adjust the panel's elevation to eliminate lippage as needed. Make sure that you don't use the straps as your spacer. This could break tiles and panels 
during the removal process the next day after the mortar is dried. Here you can see an eighth of an inch spacer has been used. Temporarily place your caps in place just to ensure the panels are flat and lippage free. Lippage control systems that have removable wedges or caps are required as after this step has been completed, you'll need to remove them in order to clean out any mortar that has gotten in between the two panels. Once the panels are in place, all lippage has been removed. You've worked the two panels together with the palm sander where they meet. You can place your caps back onto the panels, securing them in place for curing overnight.